Good morning, and welcome here. Uh, it's notably emptier today, and I'm wondering if the humidity outside has something to do with it. Probably. Um, welcome here. Today is Youth Sunday. Uh, I am not a youth. That was many years ago. But Marvin Queering and the rest of the youth leaders and the youth are going to be presenting us with the service this morning. So I'm just going to hand it over to them, and they will lead us. Good morning. Since it's so uh, warm outside, uh, should we get everyone to like come a little closer so we uh, can stay a little warmer inside too? No. If everyone if everyone's comfortable, you can move up, but you don't you don't have to. But you just have to sing extra loud. All right. Um, so uh, this morning we've uh, formed a little bit of a worship team, and we're gonna share uh, sing a couple of songs with you guys. So if you guys are able, um, stand. Um, I'll just introduce a little bit here. We got Trennis on the guitar, Laura, um, Janelle, thank you, and Cherry. And uh, yeah, so there we practiced a little bit and we join us this morning with the uh, first song is, which one again? How Great Is Our God. So if you guys want to stand, that would be awesome.
that little handout or a little thing in your bulletin. Um, the words, and I'm assuming this is not working this morning. It was supposed to be up here, but I guess it is also in your bulletin. Right. Um, for starter, or we'll go over the bulletin here this morning. I'm trying to figure out what I'm all doing here. Um, if you guys want to open it up, and we'll go through it uh, this week um, at the CFC uh, this afternoon, um, the Fellowship FOSPA that has been canceled. Um, so that's what I was told. It's been canceled. So don't come here at 2:30. There might you might be the only ones here then. Uh, Tuesday, April 26, uh, 7 o'clock, 11 respects um, session. The second one will be here at the church. Uh, Wednesday, April 27, uh, 10 a.m. is seniors coffee time. And then at 7.30 is uh, choir and singing practice. On Thursday, the 28th, uh, the youth is having a fun night um, from 7 to 9 drop-off and pickup will be at the Valley Bowling Lanes um, in Winkler here. So uh, don't, don't drop your kids off at the church because uh, we won't be here. Uh, Friday, April 29th, um, there's Mission Fest at Church of the Rock. And also uh, on the same, also on Friday at 6 p.m. is the Promise Keepers Conference at the Cornerstone uh, Vineyard Church. Uh, please contact uh, Pastor Jake if you would like to attend. Uh, there's also a poster on the bulletin board with more information. Uh, Promise Keepers is a men's conference. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, also, a note there, Pastor Jake will be away from the office on Tuesday. Prayer requests and praise items. Uh, pray for Pastor Jake as he prepares for the message for next Sunday. Um, also pray for uh, Corny and Adriana as they lead the Love and Respect um, series. Um, just uh, we were at that on Tuesday, and it was uh, it was good, and it was a good turnout. So it was uh, just keep them in in uh, your prayers, um, and also continue to pray for the people who are being uh, affected by the war in Ukraine. Um, one that's not in here, but I think a lot of us have been some has been busy throughout the night with this, uh, pray for uh, the people being affected by this, uh, this rain and the flooding. Um, there's people that are losing their, their basements um, underwater and uh, their yards and their houses are being threatened as well. Um, just locally here, driving down the 32 this morning, um, seeing the water up to the highway is, uh, was very rare. And so uh, people, there are people that are, I'm sure, con concerned and uh, are a little unsure about what the uh, next couple of days or even today will be, but uh, yes. Oh, okay, another one there. So yeah, just keep let's, def let's definitely keep them in uh, in our prayers. Um, 
today and in the next couple of days as well. Davey has one here. Thanks. <clears throat> um, praise items. Uh, praise God for um, giving us uh, eternal life through the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, missionaries to pray for this week uh, is Megan Friesen. Um, she was going to be here this morning to do a mission report, but she has contacted us and said she will not be making it today. Um, so let's uh, keep, keep her in our prayers. Um, if you turn to the back of the bulletin, um, upcoming CFC and CMC events, um, the men's fishing retreat is coming up soon at uh, June uh, 16th to the 19th. As long as winter has left by then, then we plan on going fishing. Uh, talk to Kevin um, if you are interested in going. Uh, church camping is officially planned to take place at Rock Lake, where... Uh, they have a group site booked, um, July 22nd to the 24th are the dates. There is a sign-up sheet in the back. Please sign up by May 31st. Uh, we will create a group chat on WhatsApp for those coming for any questions as well as directions to the campsite um, for those that need it. Um, everyone is welcome. If you have any questions, please contact Justin or Monica Giesbra. There's also going to be a conference-wide picnic this summer, August the 14th. Um, at New Bothwell Park, and there will be a morning service there for the congregation. Um, so the whole conference gets together and has a, as a, um, a service together in the morning. And uh, we were at it a couple of years ago, and it, it, was, uh, it was good. It's good to see all the different churches come together and spend the afternoon playing some games, um, playing some competitive, I think there's competitive baseball, at least last time when we were at the delegate meeting, um, there was some, some brave talking going on already. Um, so... Uh, there will be some uh, activities there as well to, to come there. So put, mark that on your calendars. Um, upcoming community events. Uh, Mission Fest Manitoba will be held at Church of the Rock in Winnipeg, April 29th to the 1st. Um, and Steinbach uh, Bible College is having their annual golf tournament um, June 7th in uh, Cory Oaks in Steinbach and June 21st uh, at Minnewasta in Morden. If you're interested in golfing, um, and want um, you can make your own team as well, or you can uh, contact Pastor Jake, and they usually get a couple of groups of guys from the church and make a couple of teams to go golfing. So if you need a reason to uh, take the day off of work, uh, golf is a good one. Um, and uh, so, so uh, plan for that. And there's also an opportunity to get involved with helping um, with the Ukraine immigrants. Um, that, that are coming here and helping them get settled in. So if you're interested in that, there's more info there as well. Um, a little note for today's order of service. Um, again, there won't be any mission report and there won't be a scripture and prayer reading um, as Dry couldn't make it this morning. They didn't drive out this morning. So uh, those two things will be, will be skipped. So if I have missed any announcements at this point, um, please do speak up. If not, at this time I will call up the ushers. All right, let's uh, let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this morning. We, uh, we thank you for showing us your power, Lord. Um, we see it through the weather. We see it through the, the rain and the snow. And Lord, we know that uh, you are still in control. And even though um, we are unsure of what tomorrow brings or uh, how this will all end up, Lord, we know that you're in control. And Lord, we want to put that faith and trust in you. And we just pray for those that are out there that are uh, sandbagging and that are trying to protect their homes and uh, the roads that are washed out and people traveling and the icy roads and the people working out there. And we just pray that you will put your hand of protection upon them and that you will just guide them through it and you will also give them encouragement. Uh, we want to pray for uh, Corny and Adriana as they, uh, 
they are leading the Love and Respect series. We pray that you will uh, just encourage them to continue with that. And uh, all those that are attending as well, that you will just uh, walk with them through that as well. Um, I want to pray for Pastor Jake as he prepares for um, the message next Sunday. You just give him the encouragement that he needs to uh, to find, to uh, just to f- study your word and to present it in a way that uh, you, you have planned for him. Um, we also want to pray for the people that are being affected um, through the war in the Ukraine. Uh, you just, uh, we know, we don't all know what's going on there, Lord, but you do. And we just pray that you'll put your hand of protection upon them um, in any way or sort that, that you see fit. Uh, we also want to pray for uh, Davy's grandma as, uh, as she's, uh, she's lonely and she's, uh, she's ready to come and, and, and see you, Lord. And we just pray that you will, uh, you will just be with her. You'll give her comfort through, um, if it's pain or whatever, you know the story, Lord. We just pray that you will, you will be with her and that uh, you will put your guiding hand over her. We also want to pray for Megan um, Friesen, um, the missionary this week, Lord. And we just pray that you will continue to bless her and her work. Um, that you'll continue just to uh, to grow the youth for Christ there, and we just uh, pray that you will be with her. Also, want to pray for this morning as the youth lead, uh, you will calm their nerves, and that um, your word will be presented through the things that they do. Uh, we also want to pray this morning for the um, the offering that will be taken up. We pray that you'll bless the gift and also the giver. In your name, we pray. Amen.
morning. So it's Youth Sunday. We've done numerous things in the past. We've done skits, we've done puppet shows, we've done all sorts. This time, we'll be doing something different. We have chosen five songs, five common songs from your hymnals. And these songs, <coughs> excuse me, these songs have authors that have, there's a reason for these songs. These authors have gone through a lot and these songs were the result of all their experiences. So the youth is going to be um, reading their story and then we'll be singing the song that they wrote. And, uh, but before we go further, let's, um, let's bow for prayer. Lord, I, uh, I ask that your hand be on this service, and I thank you for being here with us. We know your word says that where two or three are gathered, you are here as well. And uh, we thank you for that. And uh, we pray that everything that is done here this morning will be to your honor and your glory and your service. Amen. If you could turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. So I wanted to start off with, I wanted to focus more on the, the authors that wrote these stories. I wanted to focus on what brought them through, what, what made them able to go through the things that they did, which you'll hear about soon. Um, and yet, they could sit down later and write these songs of praise, songs of joy to God. So let's read James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So these are the verses that I would like you to just keep in mind as we go through these stories. Um, when you hear these stories, realize that this is something that God allows. Like the the trials that these guys went through, God didn't, God didn't send these trials to them, but he allowed them to, to live through these as a way of building up their faith, and we have the result in these songs. Um, these authors, they went through awful things that would break many, many people. Um, many people have gone through the same things, and while well, they didn't they didn't sit down afterwards and write a song about it. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't come through it in the same way. Some people can, but they will never write a song about it. For me personally, I could go through a thousand hardships and I would never sit down and write a song about it. I'm, well, I'm a redneck that lives in the hills, so it's a kind of a double whammy there. There's, there is no way I do rhyme or rhythm, but I can go through a trial and I can still have a song in my heart. If I sing it out loud, you might not appreciate it, but I can have that song in my heart and I can be joyful. I can be, I can still be blessed by it. I can still grow through that. So I'm sure everyone here has had hardships. Some have had many hardships, but did your faith grow because you saw God at your side when you asked him for his for his hand? Did your faith grow when you, you realized you were at the bottom of the pit and to help, to get help up, you had to have God's hand that you reached up your hand, God, God reached down and he helped pull you through. Or did your faith stumble because you tried to get it through the hard time on your own? There's a choice that we make every time, every day. Do we look to God for help or do we try to run through it on our own? So turn with me to Psalms 55, verse 22. Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. So God is always there. But there's, there's a promise in those verses, but there's also a requirement of us. We have to cast our burdens on the Lord. We have to actually release our burdens to God. If we do that, there's the promise that 
he will help us through. But it's a twofold promise there. The promise is there, but we also have to do our part. We have to actually reach toward God. We have to make a conscious effort to actually be like, God, I need your help with this. I can't do this on my own. So the stories of these men, these men are, they, they made that choice every time. They made that choice to turn toward God. They realized they couldn't do it without him. They realized that God was still love, God was still mercy, God was still all-powerful, even though they had gone through the hardest times in their lives. So as we go through this morning, the the youth is going to come up, we're going to do some singing, and if you're able to, stand up. The, The songs are all in the hymnals, and I think they'll be displayed here as well. Stand up with us if you're able to, join us in the singing, and we can praise and worship God together. What a friend we have in Jesus. The pace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Joseph Scriven watched in shock as the body of his fiancée was pulled from the lake. Their wedding had been planned for the very next day. Reeling from the tragedy, he made up his mind to immigrate to America. Packing up his belongings in Dublin, Ireland, he sailed for Canada, leaving his mother behind. He was about 25 years old. Ten years later, in 1855, he received word that his mother was facing a crisis. Joseph wrote this poem and sent it to her. Mrs. Scriven evidently gave a copy to a friend who had published it anonymously, and it quickly became a popular hymn, although no one knew who had written it. Meanwhile, Joseph fell in love again, but tragedy struck a second time when his bride, Eliza Catherine Roche, contracted tuberculosis and died in 1860 before their wedding could take place. To escape his sorrow, Joseph poured himself into ministry, doing charity work for the Plymouth Brethren and preaching among the Baptists. He lived a simple, obscure life in Port Hope, Canada, cutting firewood for widows, giving away his clothes and money to those in need. He was described as a man of short stature with iron gray hair, close cropped beard, and light blue eyes that sparkled when he talked, Ira Sankey later wrote. Until a short time before his death, it was not known that he had a poetic gift. A neighbor sitting up with him in his illness happened upon a manuscript copy of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Reading it with great delight and questioning Mr. Scriven about it, he said that he had composed it for his mother to comfort her in a time of special sorrow, not intending that anyone else should see it. Some time later, when another Port Hope neighbor asked him if it was true he composed the hymn, his reply was, The Lord and I did it between us. On October 10, 1896, Joseph became critically ill. In his delirium, he rose from his bed and staggered outdoors, where he fell into a small creek and drowned at age 66. His grave was arranged so that his feet were opposite those of his lost love, Eliza Catherine Roach, that at the resurrection they might arise facing one another. Now if you would please join us in singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus on page 466 in your hymnals.
Sing, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 An old English pe- preacher once said, A grateful mind is a great mind. And the Bible agrees. There are 138 passages of scripture on the subject of thanksgiving, and some of them are powerfully worded. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 adds, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Unfortunately, few hymns are devoted exclusively to thanking God. Among the small rich handful we do have is, Now thank we all our God. The German Christians sing this hymn like the American believers sing the doxology, yet it's loved on both sides of the Atlantic and around the world. It was written by Martin Rinkart, a Lutheran pastor in the village of Eilenburg, Saxony. He grew up as a son of a poor coppersmith, fell called to the ministry, and after his theological training, began his pastoral work just as the Thirty Years' War was raging through Germany. Floods of refugees began streaming into the walled city of Ellenburg. It was the most desperate of times. The Swedish army encompassed the city gates, and inside the walls there was nothing but plague, famine, and fear. 800 homes were destroyed, and people began dying in increasing numbers. There was a tremendous strain on the pastors, who expended all their strength to preaching the gospel, caring for the sick and the dying, and burying the dead. One after another, the pastors themselves took ill and perished until at last only Martin Rinkart was left. Some days he conducted as many as 50 funerals. Finally, the Swedes demanded a huge ransom. It was Martin Rinkart who left the safety of the city walls to negotiate with the enemy, and he did it with such courage and faith that there was soon a conclusion of hostilities and the period of suffering ended. Rinkart, knowing that there was no healing without thanksgiving, composed this hymn for the survivors of Ellenburg and has been sung ever since all around the world ever since. Now we thank our God with hears and hands of voices and wondrous things he has done in whom the world rejoices. If you have a hymnal, please turn to page 525.
you guys can stay seated for the rest of the other songs and just join us from your chairs there. So. Likewise, I say to you, there is a joy in the presence of the angels over of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, 10. 18 of, Mon 18 of Monica Donridge's 19 children died in infancy. When number tw 20 arrived on June 26, 1702, he too appeared still re stillborn. But while being laid aside, he cried out. Monica determined then and there to raise Philip for the Lord. As a young child, he sat on her knees at the fireplace, which is lined with dove tiles, illustrating the story of the Bible. Using those tiles, Monica taught her child the son of the scripture, lessons of the scripture. Later, when he was orphaned, Philip wrote in his diary, God is an immortal father, my soul rejoices in him. He hath hitherto helped me and provided for me. It may be my study to approve myself more affectionate, grateful, and dutiful child. But while he was destitute, and though he longed to be a minister, there seemed no way to afford the necessary education. Friends advised him to prepare for another profession but while making a final decision, Philip decided to set apart for an earnest prayer. While he was praying, the postman arrived with a letter from a wealthy benefactor offering him to fund his, his training. It was such a timely answer that Philip resolved henceforth to live a life with prayer, and he trained himself to pray without easing, even while getting washed and dressed for the morning. At age 27, Philip was asked to become the head of a seminary for dissenting ministerial students in Northampton, England. His health was frail, and he didn't think he was well enough for the new responsibilities. While passing a house, he overheard a child reading Deuteronomy 33, verse 25. As your days, so shall your strength be. He took it from God and accepted the call. The reputation of Northampton Academy radiated through England, and students flocked there, in part because of Philip's chapel servants and his powerful prayer life. For 22 years, Philip trained students and his books became must-reading for the Christians of his day and ours. By age 48, however, he was exhausted. Consumption struck his lungs and he traveled to Lisbon for a therapeutic holiday. There he passed away on October 26, 1751. Today, Philip is best remembered for his book, The Rise and Progress of Religion in the Soul, and for his collection of nearly 400 hymns. Published posthumously in 1755, and which included O Happy Day. Please turn with us to the song number 647 to sing O Happy Day. i 
It is well with my soul. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 34, verse 19. When the Great Chicago Fire consumed the Windy, the windy City in 1871, Horatio G. Spafford, an attorney heavily invested in real estate, lost a fortune. About that time, his only son, age four, succumbed to a scarlet fever. Horatio drowned his grief in work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 who had been left homeless. In November of 1873, he decided to take his wife and daughters to Europe. Her issue was close to D.L. Moody and Ira Sankey, and he wanted to visit their evangelistic meetings in England, then enjoy a vacation. When an urgent matter detained Horatio in New York, he decided to send his wife Anna and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie, on ahead. As he saw them settled into a cabin aboard the, the luxurious French liner Villa du Havre, an unease filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. Then he said goodbye, promising to join them soon. During the small hours of November 22, 1873, as the Villa du Havre glided over smooth seas, the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship was collided with an iron sailing vessel and water poured in like Niagara. The Villa, Villa du Havre tilted dangerously. Screams, prayers, and oaths merged into a nightmare of unmeasured unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to the posts, tumbled through darkness, and were swept away by powerful currents of icy ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into foaming blackness. Within two hours, the mighty ship had vanished beneath the waters. The 226 fatalities included Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie. Mrs. Spafford was found nearly unconscious clinging to a piece of the wreckage. When the 47 survivors landed in Cardiff, Wales, she cabled his husband, saved alone. Horatio immediately booked passage to join his wife. On, right, on route, route, on a cold December night, the captain called his, his aside and said, I believe we are now passing over the place where the Ville du Havre went down. Spafford went to his cabin, but found it too hard to sleep. He said to himself, it is well, the will of God be done. He later wrote this famous hymn based on these words. Um, we'll now uh, sing it as well, my soul, and it's found on page 495.
the solid rock. For no one other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11 Edward Mote was born into pover poverty on January 21, 1797 in London. His parents' innkeepers wouldn't allow a Bible in their house, but somehow Edward heard the gospel as a teenager and came to Christ. He eventually became a skilled carpenter and the owner of his own cabinet shop. One morning, he recalled, it came into my mind as I went to labor to write a hymn on the greatest experience of a Christian. As I went up to Holborn, I had the chorus, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. In the day, I had four verses complete and wrote them off. On the Sabbath following, I met Brother King, who informed me that his wife was very ill and asked me to call and see her. I had an early tea and called afterwards. He said that it was his usual custom to sing a hymn, read a portion, and engage in prayer before he went to meeting. He looked for his hymn book, but could find it nowhere. I said, I have some verses in my pocket. If you liked, we could sing them. We did, and his wife enjoyed them so much that after the service, he asked me, as a favor, to leave a copy of them for his wife. I went home, and by the fireside, composed the last two verses, wrote the whole off, and took them to Sister King. As these verses so met the dying woman's case, my attention to them was the more arrested, and I had a thousand printed for distribution. In 1852, Edward, 55, gave up his carpentry to pastor the Baptist Church in Horsham, Sussex, where he ministered 21 years. He resigned in 1873 in failing health, saying, I think I am going to heaven. Yes, I am nearing port. The truths I have been preaching, I am now living upon, and they'll do very well to die upon. Ah, the precious blood. He passed away at age 77. Here's an interesting verse from Mote's original that is omitted from most hymnals today. I trust his righteous character, his counsel, promise, and his power, his honor, and his names at stake, to save me from the burning lake, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And would you please join us in singing the solid rock on page 92. I'm not afraid. 
Good morning. Um, in closing, um, we've just shared some hymns with you guys, and um, you know, lots of these songs, they're about surrender, they're about uh, people that have lived through hardship and difficulties, and yet they've, uh, they've allowed um, God to still use them, and that they can still minister. I'd like to share a few verses for closing. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, it reads like this. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So here we see that uh, singing is part of uh, Christian's life. Um, it's part of what we do. Um, and some of these song, songs are songs of worship. Well, they're all songs of worship, but different styles of worship. Some are surrender, some are praise. Um, there's so many different ways that we can worship our God. Um, I'd like to uh, also turn to Psalm chapter 40, verse 1 to 3. It says there, um, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and will trust in the Lord. Here we see that uh, it starts off with waiting patiently for the Lord. Um, so patience is something that, uh, that we have to often learn. And uh, it says here that the Lord heard his cry and he brought him out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. Miry clay, that's uh, muddy dirt or it's uh, sticky dirt or whatever. If you live close to Altona, you'll know what it is. Um, it's a little bit different than this area. It sticks to your boots, your boots get really heavy. Um, and so here we see that, uh, that the Lord will release us from this and he'll set our feet on solid rock and make our footsteps firm. And uh, as a result here too, verse 3, it says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. So when we go through these hardships, when we have this mud on our feet, and when we uh, sometimes uh, go through tough times, we know that we can always turn to Christ and that He will, um, he will save us uh, through, from anything, any difficulty. If we give our burdens to Him, He will release us of those burdens. We can persevere through Christ. Um, I'd also like to share Psalm 96, verses 1 to 6. Psalm 96, verses 1 to 6 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord has made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Here again, we see that we're supposed to sing to the Lord, um, that we're supposed to bless his name, um, that, it's, uh, that we worship a great God, and that it's a form of ministry. Uh, verse 3, it says... Uh, uh, tell of his glory to the nations and his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. So we're supposed to proclaim God's greatness. We serve a wonderful God and he is worthy of our praise. Uh, the last verses I'd like to share with you are Psalm 135 verses 1 to 3. When we think about God being worthy of our praise, uh, here we see again that it's emphasized. Uh, it says there, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is lovely. We've just uh, sang a bunch of hymns, and there's so many other ways that we can also praise and worship uh, God. Let's, uh, let's make that our goal going forward, that we can, um, that we can consciously, consciously uh, praise God. We have a wonderful God. We have a merciful God. We have a loving God. We go through tough times. 
sometimes times that aren't at all fun, that even sometimes just are terrible, and yet we can always turn to God. Um, he'll always be there for us. He can comfort us and help us through these times and that we can praise him for his greatness, for his love, for his care, and for his mercy that he shows on us over and over again. Let's, uh, let's pray for a closing. Father God, we thank you for today, even though it is stormy outside and uh, there's people that are out there struggling. We pray, Lord, that, uh, that somewhere out there someone is being witnessed to as a result of this suffering, that maybe someone can come to you through, through these uh, ice storms and rain that we've been getting and overland flooding, Lord. We just pray that you can be praised through this as well. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will bless the youth that have presented here this morning uh, as they have uh, um, gone out of their comfort zones and uh, that they've been willing to allow you to use them as a vessel and that they can be part of the ministry, Lord. We just pray that you will uh, bless our congregation here and that you will also uh, be with uh, all the others that are maybe not here tonight or today because of the weather. We pray that you will... Um, that you will let your spirit reign freely within our hearts, Lord, that we can be open to your spirit's leading and that we can follow you and praise you and worship you, God. You are truly worthy of all our praise and worship. And Lord, we just pray that you will take care of us, lead us, guide us, and give us strength. In Jesus' name, amen.
that was a fantastic job, guys. Um, you know, as we sang that last song, and it all kind of hinges on this, doesn't it? And all these, these hymn writers, they all had this in common. Uh, they all believed in the Lamb of God, and it all hinges on the gospel. And it comes back down to that. Um, thank you very much for the service, for, for doing that for us. Um, I wanted to read the, the benediction. Uh, it's not a regular benediction that I would normally use, but I thought it was so fitting uh, that we, they talked about all these, these hymn writers and the struggles they went through, and they still held on to their faith. Um, and so I thought that this was a perfect example, a perfect uh, fitting uh, benediction. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. God bless you and go in peace.